One, kicked out of Kensington Palace and sent back to Canada by Prince Charles. What I was told was, I think this was 2000, late 2016 or 2017. It was before, obviously before they married, before they were engaged. And it was also before the Invictus Games where she appeared with Marcus Anderson and also the Inskip wedding that she allegedly gatecrashed. She was previously a uh, plus one and then they broke up and she still turned up, apparently. So the incident at Kensington Palace, I believe, was her allegedly taking photos in private areas with a view to selling them at a later date, allegedly. It was said that Prince Charles personally made sure that she was sent straight to the airport and back to Canada, allegedly. Two, banned from the palace grounds. This is all part of it. She was found not to be trusted. And as a result, you'll notice that ever since then, she's never done anything or been involved in anything on palace property without somebody from the royal family being there, like Prince Harry or somebody else. Also, it's the fact that she had the her cookery book launch was not actually in Kensington Palace. It was in the grounds and Harry was there. He wasn't supposed to be there, but he, he was there. He was told to be there, allegedly. So it was in a marquee in the grounds because they didn't want her in, in the actual palace. Number three, escorted out of a polo match by Prince William. I was told that Prince William helped remove her from this polo match. Maybe his security guy did. But um, she was allegedly not supposed to be there. And this was in the very early days of her and Harry's relationship. And I'm not sure what the reasons were for her being escorted out of this one. Here we have a later polo match. And she was allegedly rummaging through um, the back of Prince Harry's calf. She definitely was looking for some things. She had said to one of the guys who asked her that she was looking for sun cream. So she was questioned by one, seems to sort of confront her, and she totally backs off. Now she's there again, a third time. And obviously she sees someone, whether it's Prince Harry or one of his security, coming towards her, and she literally walks backward, to totally moves away from what she was doing. That was after they were married, I believe. I believe that was in the early days of their marriage. And it was said that she was looking for his phone, allegedly. Number four. She was told by Her Majesty that she would not have what she wanted when it came down to the tiara. I think most of us know this story. It was in the papers. And she was told that she would wear the tiara, tiara that she gave her. The Queen saw the side of Meghan where she was very demanding, and that was when she was worried. This was right before the wedding. And it was alleged that she gave her the Queen Mary tiara, which was actually a replica. And if you look at the some of the video of the wedding, you'll see, especially outside in the sunshine, you'll see the light really catching the stones in that tiara and they give a rainbow effect and apparently a true diamond doesn't give that rainbow effect those are fake basically it's a replica they're crystal and can you blame the queen for doing that no air fresheners allowed that's number five the chapel was built in 1475 in a gothic style it's a grade one listed building now obviously it's going to smell musty um megan wanted to have air fresheners in there and was told no number six no red carpet megan wanted a red carpet for her wedding catherine the duchess of cambridge had a red carpet and the late princess diana had a red carpet. 
Due to the fact that Meghan is classed as an, a lesser royal, it was in Windsor Chapel rather than in Westminster Abbey. She was told she could have a blue carpet, but she refused, and that's why she basically ended up with no carpet. Number seven, no solo walk up the aisle. Meghan wanted to do the whole walk on her own, but she was told that she could only do the first part on her own and had to be walked up to Prince Harry in keeping with tradi tradition. And there was no way they were going to let her, good, her do the whole walk on her own. Number eight, no Dalai Lama to perform ceremony. Harry and Meghan wanted him to preach the sermon, not necessarily perform the marriage. Number nine, no birth announcement at Windsor Castle. The whole thing was very strange. I have another video which was a bit of a comedy of Harry outside the stables. Everything was very strange around that birth. Number 10. No announcement from Buckingham Palace. When they did finally put the notice up, it had no signatures from any doctors. Number 11. No, you must go to Morocco. She flatly refused to go to Morocco and basically she was made to go. It's interesting how Her Majesty the Queen gave Meghan patronage of organisations which spoke volumes about the things that Meghan was actually being criticised for in the media at the time. One was the patronage um, to do with the retirement home uh, where she went to meet the seniors that had previously been actors and it, at the same time she was being criticised publicly for ignoring her own father. And then the other patronage to do with the dogs, she had neglected her own dogs, allegedly. And then the, the patronage for the National Theatre was quite ironic because of her questionable acting skills and the questionable roles that she had. So I think the Queen was saying a lot by giving her those at that time. 13. Sent home from Prince Charles's garden party. They hadn't long been married there. Meghan had allegedly poked her tongue out at Camilla and also laughed at a bee stinging Prince Harry. Her general demeanour was annoying Prince Charles and Camilla. It was supposed to be his day and she was swanning around greeting people and accepting gifts and a car was called by Prince Charles's people and was waiting outside for them and he spoke to Harry and said that the car was waiting and Harry said, oh, he seemed surprised, but went along with it, obviously. And Meghan looked very shocked. She looked as if she was right in the middle of being in her element, having all this attention. And then suddenly Camilla came, came over and gave her a kiss goodbye. And Charles said goodbye. And they just had to go. In the car, as they were leaving, she looks very unhappy. Then number 14, told to stay back. This was at the exhibition for Prince Charles's investiture. There was a table with the exhibits on and the rest of the senior members of the royal family, the Queen, Camilla, Prince William and Catherine, were walking through. Somehow Prince, Ch Prince Harry and Meghan were standing at the door when they were coming through and Prince Harry gestures to his father as if to say, after you. And Charles looks totally bewildered by it and laughs as if he can't really believe it and right after that um, he's he tells Megan to stand back or both of them to stay back to stay back and while this is happening some aides are rushing over literally running towards Prince Harry and Megan to engage them in conversation I don't know what they spoke to them about but it was basically to keep them in one place and to keep them there probably told them that they were not they were not supposed to be part of this I believe that they were actually supposed to have entered through a different door, but they were not supposed to be part of this group of the senior members of the royal family. Number 15 is when Prince Harry told Meghan to turn around, got quite annoyed with her. 
Um, I think she was questioning whether they could stand in a different spot she wanted to be over where she would be in the photographs, basically behind the Queen and next to Prince William and Catherine. But they were not supposed to be over on that side. They were behind, she was standing behind the children. She did this twice. He got quite irritated with her and clearly says at one point, turn around, number 16, no stand at the back, Megan. Basically, this was when Princess Anne does a, a sidestep and they all close ranks to stop Meghan from pushing through to stand directly behind the Queen because she was headed that way. She was smiling and making a, taking a big step up onto the balcony to position herself behind the Queen. And Eugenie's husband Jack and Princess Anne moved swiftly to prevent this from happening. Number 17, made to stand on another balcony. This is protocol, as people have said, but it's still bothered Megan and you can see it by her expression she was made this was the previous year and she was made to stand um, on a separate balcony next to the German Chancellor she always said she could speak German so maybe it was put to the test here number 18 no access to royal jewels after the tiara incident the Queen rightly stopped Megan from having any access to royal jewels especially particularly Princess Diana's collection if she has worn anything it's been a replica she's been seen wearing butterfly earrings that have been proven to be replicas. Number 19, no access to royal property without supervision. And this is since she was allegedly caught taking photographs in Kensington Palace. Number 20, no separate carriage. Um, she wasn't meant to be there, apparently, and so was told to ride in the carriage with the open carriage with Camilla and Catherine and also Prince Harry beside her, and it was said that this was their way of keeping an eye on her to make sure she behaved. But I also believe that they didn't actually have a carriage ready because she wasn't expected to be there. And I think that Harry was supposed to be riding with Camilla and Catherine on his own, and Meghan wasn't even supposed to be there. Number 21, ignored by Prince William last Christmas, or rather scarfed by Prince William last Christmas. I think most of us remember this, where she was trying to make conversation and the cameras were clicking. There was quite a lot going on there. There was some video whereby it looked as if Prince Charles was not happy and had said something to Prince Harry. There was some interaction going on there and Meghan was trying to make, trying to make conversation with Prince William. Catherine does step up and walk with Prince William. She sees that things are getting difficult and Prince William is busy adjusting his scarf to avoid having to interact with her. Number 22, appointed a babysitter. This is Lord Geit and the Queen's right-hand man who she basically appointed to babysit Meghan because I think he was the man for the job. Number 23, no dogs are allowed in Buckingham Palace except Her Majesty's, and I believe that Her Majesty has only got one dog now. Meghan and Harry were apparently acquiring more dogs. I think Harry had, I think they had a black Labrador, and Meghan was about to adopt another dog, and they wanted them in Buckingham Palace in the offices that they were being given, and the Queen refused. She didn't want any other dogs in there except her own. 24. Placed at the back of the Royal Albert Hall again. For the second time, they were placed right at the back, over to one side, almost behind the curtain. As people have said, it's easy to crop people out in the photos when you have them out to the side. 25. Cropped out of picture by Kate and William on their Instagram account. So this actually happened. They just had the immediate senior members of the royal family in the photo. There might have been no reason for it, or it might have been they wanted to keep Andrew out, Prince Andrew out of the picture. Number 26, different balcony again. This is the this is the Remembrance Day the following year, this year. And she's standing next to Sophie, between Sophie and Princess Anne's husband, Tim. Again, does not look very happy. Even though it is protocol, she is, it's not a snub. It is actually where she's meant to be. Number 27, being babysat at the Field of Remembrance. It was supposed to be Camilla there with Prince Harry and Camilla was unwell and dropped out of it. It was very noticeable that she had several people watching her intently and one man in particular standing beside her and behind her. The one that walks up with her has to tell her every step of the way what to do and she does watch him 
and follows what he does. Number 28, No Christmas at Sandringham, which was allegedly the Queen's choice, as they weren't invited. Number 29, being told to go away for six weeks, speaks for itself. They have gone away for six weeks. Megan is still putting things out there, little snippets of updates in the news. Number 30, taken to airport by Sophie and Edward, allegedly. It was said that she was escorted to the airport and Edwin and Sophie were going to New York and that they made sure that Megan got on the plane. 31. Sophie was given roles in New York City and Toronto, which Megan allegedly wanted. Sophie was leading the way with women's initiatives and other events in New York and also in Toronto. And it did seem as if it was done to put Meghan in her place by the Queen. Told to stay away from Buckingham Palace reception. Not surprising. There were world leaders there. And Meghan, being very political, would probably have really put her foot in it there. Number 33. During the exit from royal life, the Queen said no to one foot in and one foot out whereby they could be part-time working royals. She refused to allow them to do that. It was either in or out. Number 34. Meghan was told no, she could not attend the Sandringham meeting via video link, as it could not be recorded. They could not risk her recording it and using it in a future interview against them or in a book. Number 35. The monarchy says no to the Sussex Royal Foundation directorship and they take it over. Number 36. The Queen says no to Meghan using the Sussex Royal brand, costing Meghan hundred thousands of dollars and rendering her brand name useless. Number 37. The Queen says no, she won't pay for Meghan and Harry's security while they're in Canada. And Canada also says no. Number 38. Queen removes Meghan's patronages. The Queen says no to Meghan's patronages. Number 39. The palace says no, they will not be silenced by Meghan. And the palace aides are actively encouraged to speak out about Meghan's treatment of them. Number 40. No more silence on Meghan's bad behaviour. Meghan's treatment of staff on the Australian tour is being looked into. Number 41. Palace say no to Meghan continuing to perpetrate the lie that they had a secret wedding three days before the actual wedding and Justin Welby was told to come clean but in the right sort of way so that no one loses face but Meghan doesn't win and is put in her place. Number 42. The palace say no and that recollections may vary after Meghan and Harry's shocking interview with Oprah. Prince William denies racism in the royal family. Number 43. The Queen says no. Meghan and Harry are not going to ruin the UK and USA relations. This was regarding Harry's remarks about the Constitution, but the Queen had had enough. Number 44. The Queen says no to using Lilibet as a name. She said that when Prince Philip died, the family, no one was to use that name anymore. But Harry and Meghan went ahead and used it by making the Queen believe that they were asking if they could use the name Elizabeth, but they really wanted to use Lilibet. Number 45. Prince Charles gets tough and says no regarding Meghan and Harry using their titles of Duke and Duchess of Sussex. This was in June 2021. Number 46. Prince William says no, Meghan will not attend his mother's ceremony. Number 47. The Queen says no to Meghan having Lily's christening at Windsor although Harry demands it. The Queen says no more. In August 2021, the Queen says no more 
and orders the palace to lawyer up because she will take action against Meghan and Harry. Number 49. No spies here. The palace ensured that Harry and Meghan were checked at the UN security building during their visit and the information straight back to them and they were treated like spies and had their devices removed allegedly. My video of the 21st of October 2021 entitled Harry and Meghan treated as UN spies question mark you can find on this channel. Number 50 told to stay out of all palaces in Europe Meghan and Harry are told that they're not allowed in the King and Queen of Netherlands palaces, nor any royal buildings. This was back in April of 2022, when they went to the Invictus Games. Number 51. The Queen says no to Meghan's Netflix team and protects herself with a ring of steel in preparation for her jubilee. Number 52. The palace says no to Meghan and Harry recording at the cathedral service in June 2022 when it was discovered that they had hidden microphones and the palace put the then Major Johnny Thompson, now equerry to King Charles, to sit behind Harry and Meghan with possibly a scrambling device and sitting next to him was a woman from a certain three-letter agency Number 53. Prince William says no to Meghan or Harry talking about the Jubilee. If they do, they are out. Number 54. Prince William says no to the withholding of information regarding Archie and Lily and demands that Meghan comes up with the proof. Meghan is afraid that Harry will drop his title so he doesn't have to come up with genuine birth documents for the children. The video about this is dated the 29th of June 2022 and you can find it in this channel. Number 55. Prince William says no to Meghan visiting the Queen on her deathbed. Number 56. Catherine takes a stand against Meghan and it's no you will not hug my husband as she faces her with a look of don't you dare during the walkabout after the Queen's passing. Number 57. And the biggest no from the Queen to Meghan was the no you will not be seen at my funeral when the Queen ensured that there was a giant church candle blocking the view of Meghan from most of the camera angles. We also know that she had her funeral planned down to the absolute minute detail so she would have been well aware she also knew where everyone would, would sit she would know where the cameras were and where the candles were so this was planned you can guarantee it number 58 the palace says no you will not continue using frogmore cottage so megan and harry are told they cannot live there or stay there anymore not that they did number 59 Meghan told no to attending the coronation of the king, but she makes it look as though she had a choice and had her birthday party for her son lined up so as not to lose face. Number 60. King Charles says no to Meghan and Harry attending his first annual Trooping the Colour as monarch. This was on Saturday the 17th of June 2023, marking his official birthday. So let me have your comments and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Much love. Bye.